Attention, citizens of Super Earth. Did you know that all around you there is a struggle? A struggle between man and insect. A struggle between man and robot. A struggle between my computer and the servers of Helldivers 2. That's right. While I was gone, I decided to play some Helldivers 2. The uh, uh, new game that is uh, that has taken the internet by total storm. It is a uh, wild shooter inspired by the likes of Starship Troopers, Star Wars, Halo, and many other uh, military fantasy sci-fi uh, uh, games. Subnautica 3. Wait, was there a Subnautica? We'll talk about that later. Right now, we're reporting for our duty on Super Earth. Helldivers 2 is a wild game, okay? It's a, it's a, it comes in at a very affordable $40, which is pretty good as far as, you know, big multiplayer games go these days. Significantly a lower price point than a lot of other games. Um, and I've actually had a lot of fun with it. Um, <laughs> some things that should characterize the Helldivers experience for you, okay? Most matches that you are going to jump into in Helldivers 2, you are going to have a pool of like 20 lives or so between you and your teammates, okay? You are going to get blown apart. You are going to get eviscerated. You're going to get melted by acid and or napalm. You're going to get blown up by grenades. You're going to get chopped up by chainsaws over and over and over again. And you're going to get shot by your teammates. You're going to forget to reload and then get shot in the face. It's a very difficult game. And there are a lot of, uh, there are a lot of weird choices that I really like, okay? For example, in Helldivers, everybody can do friendly fire. The enemies can friendly fire, you can friendly fire, your turrets can friendly fire, the mortars that you just called down from your spaceship can friendly fire, everything, rocks can friendly fire. You knock a rock down, the rock hits you, you're dead. It can, your dead body flies into your neighbor, they're dead. It's a very chaotic experience. Uh, there's gore, dismemberment, there's explosions, it's amazing, okay? It's very fun. Um, also, another thing, uh, is uh, your guns don't, like, reload for you. In a lot of shooters, if you pull the trigger when you're out of ammo, your character will just start reloading, you know? It's one of those quality of life things, quality of life, that's become ubiquitous in uh, modern, uh, you know, shooter games. Not in this game. If you're out of ammo and you don't hit that reload button, you're out of luck. And your character will just go, ch -ch 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 -ch. I'm out of ammo! Help! Over and over and over again until you remember to take cover and reload. I actually really like it. I like it because it creates an incredibly chaotic environment at all times uh, in which you are constantly pushed to your limit to try and remember everything that you need to do to try and stay alive, and you'll usually fail. Um, but it's really fun. And the guns feel great, the objectives feel awesome, the enemies look cool. It's got uh, a, a very funny, satirical world that is extremely reminiscent of the Starship Troopers movie. Um, and complete with um, people who are so stupid that they can't recognize um, that they're being mocked. Um, there are people on the internet currently discoursing about how awesome super earth culture is and how amazing and heroic the hell divers who die on mass every mission and whose uh, war medals are collectively gathered by the ship that they've been assigned to and not by the individuals because they die all the time. Uh, a world in which voting machines don't just automatically tally votes but actually choose your votes for you based on a personality profile that is generated by the government. A world in which it is illegal to uh, think that uh, Super Earth has any flaws. 
a world in which no longer do we celebrate democracy, but instead we celebrate managed democracy. Um, yeah. Is that the story? That's part of the story. Um, it's incredible. Uh, but uh, I've been really enjoying it. It's very funny. As you're playing the game, your little zealots that you play run around being all patriotic and saying things like, uh, le here's a here's a glass of liberty, and of course, liberty is a literal branded beverage that is approved by the government uh, and full of all kinds of nutrients and stimulants to make sure that you continue to do your duty, which is to die on the battlefield of expanding the borders of Super Earth. Um, the uh, it's a great. There's all kinds of cool things you can upgrade your ship by playing the game, which makes you more effective in battle. You can get cool upgrades like um, injecting your crew members with uh, amphetamines so that they load guns faster, which is crazy. Uh, and I mean, I don't mean your character. I mean your crew members are injected. You inject your little like crew people so that they put more bullets into your space cannons faster so that you can shoot them faster to kill more bugs. Um, yeah, it's, it's incredible. Um, and I've, I've really been having a good time with it. However, I told you I was going to rage a little bit about it. And the reason I'm going to rage a little bit about it is because I've really been enjoying it. I've wanted to play it constantly, but I haven't been able to because the servers are so overloaded that a majority of my playtime has been idling, waiting to get onto the servers, or playing in matches that are completely broken because the servers are bungled. There is a lot of server issues right now, and it's a real shame because the actual game, when you get to play it, is amazing. It's genuinely incredible. Everybody wants to play it constantly. Oh, it's bad. It's so bad. Do you know how many people concurrent Sony was expecting? No, I don't know. They were expecting 45,000 maximum. It's at like over 200,000, like was the last count that I saw before the servers stopped bother counting. It's incredible. It's actually unbelievable how many people are, um, are playing. They hit 400,000 today. Makes sense. Um... So far, I've really enjoyed the game. Um, I want to talk about all of the aspects. The um, gunplay is very weighty. Um, all of the weapons are designed to feel... Uh, it's like it's like not quite as like heavy and chunky as a Gears of War type game. It is a third-person shooter, so it's got that Gears of War feel. But you move a little faster. You can pull out your weapons a little faster. Um, but we're not, you don't get that floaty arcade feeling that you get from a game like Halo. The weapons are all, um, they're pretty heavy duty. Um, they, they have a lot of punch. They have a ton of recoil for the most part, minus like little pistols and stuff like that. And the game uses a really cool, uh, aiming mechanic where, uh, y you get like a, it's almost like a, like a lot of, um, star, star, pilot games, you know, starfighter games have where you have a reticle where you're intending to aim and then you have a little, another little reticle that tells you where your barrel is actually pointing. So if you're aiming at something, you're going to see your actual aim going all over like this with your recoil. If you're carrying a big like machine, like, you know, heavy machine gun, you're going to see your, your barrel indicator take a while to catch up with where you're actually looking. It's pretty cool. Um, and it feels really good. There's a, uh, there's a lot of benefits to, um, like diving and rolling out, uh, uh, rolling out of lines of fire and stuff like that. Um, and I've really been enjoying it, but I gotta say they have totally, totally misjudged and, uh, how many people wanted to play it and are suffering from success. Uh, I've continually joked and been made fun of by my partners for saying, I want to play Helldivers 2, then getting on and either logging in and immediately getting kicked, logging in and not being able to join any multiplayer sessions because the multiplayer sessions are broken, um, joining a game and having the lag be so bad that enemies are teleporting in front of you and you're dead before you even know that you're dead, um, or 
just getting stuck idling on the menu while Super Earth propaganda plays in a loop, which it does. If you can't get into the game, it'll just keep you make watch make you watch propaganda videos about joining the Helldivers, um, which is a thing. So, uh, and also there was a, there's been other problems as well. Like um, they had a huge issue with rewards at the end of missions. There's been a lot of, uh, of, 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 of issues on that front, which kind of sucks um, and definitely has made me frustrated. But it's one of those types of frustration where I have to temper it because the game itself, like the actual game, when the infrastructure isn't failing, is amazing. Um, the maps are these sort of like really big open maps for the most part there's a few mission types that take place in really small limited areas but for the most part you're sort of dropped into a big planet side map and there's a bunch of optional objectives on every map there's all kinds of hidden caches um of weapons and stuff there's all kind of um i guess that's the wrong we had that whole discussion i guess it's a cache isn't it not a cache that's something else but it's a cache of weapon of weapons and then there's also like there will be uh, bug nests or factories that are producing, um, you know, a certain types of enemies that will make your life harder. So you're incentivized to go into the map and think about what you do. Let me give an example of this. In a mission I played right before I started streaming today, um, we, we had to power up a nuclear power plant, but right next to it, there was a enemy artillery outpost. And uh, artillery outposts are just a type of thing that can appear on the map. It won't always be on the map, but uh, this artillery outpost was bombarding us while we were trying to do this objective, making it impossible. So instead, we had to sort of retreat from the primary objective of the mission and go just completely destroy that artillery port uh, or that artillery uh, encampment. But while we did that, they called a ton of reinforcements, which meant that we ended up in this absolutely chaotic three-way, like, uh, bloodbath where we had enemies coming in off of, uh, you know, uh, what are they called? Like, trans transport shuttles and dropping down to try and defend their artillery emplacement. We had to stay close so that we wouldn't get hit by the artillery. If we retreated, we'd get bombarded by the artillery again. But if we stayed close, they had all these guys coming in at us. Um, and of course, sometimes they'll call in really like, they'll call in like tanks that are really difficult to take down or these absolutely horrible heavy uh, mechs that are like, their armor is all on the front and you, you have to get behind them to even have a chance at taking them down. It's brutal, okay? It's awesome. There's also all kinds of random objectives that can appear on the map. Things that are like, um, you can find like a friendly super artillery, which like if you take the time, it takes like five or six minutes to power up the super artillery. You have to manually load it up. But if you do that, it will fire and support you uh, on the map. So there's like all kinds of different types of objectives that really incentivize you spending time in the mission, uh, taking out enemy encampments and all this kind of stuff. And it gives a really cool feel. There's also another layer to the game, which is a galactic struggle metagame depending on because it's a purely multiplayer game i guess you can solo missions but it's really hard to do so and the game is not really designed to be soloed but because it's a multiplayer game uh where people are choosing to fight changes the way that the uh the map goes you fight for control of different planets and events will occur that will make you lose control of planets for example for this weekend, this like big event has been an invasion of robots where they just swarm friendly planets. So you might be hanging out on a planet uh, that, that was like, you thought was totally under like earth control. You know, you're like, we're good. Managed democracy has been spread to this sector. And then all of a sudden there is an, a never ending swarm of enemies and they don't the devs don't care how hard they make this game, okay? It is brutal. If you're on a planet that is overrun with bugs or a planet that is being currently invaded by robots, it is getting invaded. You are going to drown in robots, okay? It is wild and it feels awesome.
even if sometimes it's really frustrating because you're juggling all the performance issues. Yeah, it's kind of like Galactic Conquest. It's really cool. Um, and it's a lot of fun. And the cool thing about the game is that while you get to have lots of wartime fun and whatever, the game never lets you forget uh, that you are playing a joke character. And uh, the game is simultaneously extremely fun to play while also uh, uh, like like very fun to play in like a, wow, we just blew up this big enemy base thing. And then two seconds later, you're both tumbling down a hill, desperately trying not to get shot and then dropping a grenade on your friend's head, like that type of stuff, or squishing your friend with your ordinance that you called down to support you. Happens all the time. The game is wild. Um, but anyway, I've been having a lot of fun with it. Um, for people who are thinking about playing it, um, you're going to have a good time if you can get onto the servers. But uh, it would be wrong of me not to warn people that, uh, uh, that getting on to play right now is a struggle. Um, it is definitely getting swamped. Uh, and I cannot promise you that you will get to play that much. I have had the game since the since launch day and I have barely I have barely gotten to play a normal mission um and in fact it's very frustrating because the the like matchmaking which is pretty essential to the game at the moment because it's so there's so many people sessions crashing and things like that you almost never get to play with four people which is the way that it's supposed to be played is with four people in a party so unfortunately, you spend a lot of time, uh, tr you know, struggling. But I've had a lot of fun with the struggle, and uh, I think I've I, I think I've given fair enough warning about um, <laughs> uh, about the server issues. So I'm really enjoying the game. I I think it's very funny. Uh, the writing is actually, it, it, it doesn't, I mean, it's obviously referencing stuff like Starship Troopers, but it's not, uh, it's distinct enough that it feels like an homage and not just like some kind of cheap ripoff. Um, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of funny details in the game. Uh, it does have a battle pass. However, um, and this is a big however, uh, the battle pass, it has a battle pass and a premium battle pass, but um, the battle pass uh, is there's no FOMO. The battle passes are always available and will always be available. Um, you can go and purchase from any battle pass that the game will ever have. They will never be locked and they will never like disappear. And the premium currency can be unlocked in game. So while you're playing the game, by advancing the free battle pass, you will get enough currency if you complete the free battle pass, you will have enough currency to buy the premium battle pass and more because you also get premium currency in the game from completing side objectives. Sometimes when you're on the map and you blow open a cache of, of uh, resources, there will be premium currency in there for you to spend in the shop. So while you can like sort of speed through the premium battle pass if you want the cosmetics from there um, with real money, there's not really any like pay to win stuff. Um, there are some, uh, there's, there are some, some, it's not so far. It hasn't really felt pay to win, but there are some flexibility that you get from the premium stuff. Uh, but it's not too bad because again, you can get a lot of premium currency in the game. Uh, the game's only been out for a week and I've barely played it and I almost have enough to purchase the premium battle pass just from in-game missions. So it's pretty reasonable. Now that might change in the future and I'm always pretty sus of battle passes, but so far it's pretty good. And the stuff that came in the battle pass feels more like um, tweaks as opposed to like an overpowered weapon. In fact, like the most powerful weapons that I've received have been from the normal game progression by like a long shot. Um, like I never see anybody using the premium stuff at all. Uh, everybody uses the normal progression stuff. The, the, the premium stuff tends to, seems to be more like 
a fun tweak that you can ch play change. I imagine there's going to be times where that won't be the case. I have a feeling there's probably going to be a battle pass sometime in the future where a premium item is better than the stuff that you get in the regular or fits a niche that's really important. But so far, it's not too bad. And to my knowledge, you will never be locked out of any of the normal or premium battle passes. And you get a generous amount of currency just from playing the game. It is definitely not um, a Fortnite situation. It is definitely not a Warframe situation, thank God. Um, so, it's pretty good. Um, and I gotta say, you should go play it. If that even sounds remotely, if a, a heavy-duty, extremely hilarious, hyper-chaotic, maximalist, uh, 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 third-person shooter where you're fighting aliens and robots... Uh, and being a little piece of shit sounds awesome to you. Join the Helldivers today and fight for managed democracy. Anyway, if you enjoyed this little miniature rant plus review, make sure that you smack subscribe down below. Because I talk about games that I love and why I love them and do little reviews like this all the time. Anyway, thank you.